everyone this is Ida of created to create welcome back to my channel if you are not 18 years or older this video content is not intended for you I have a project share I have been watching and I have a mess here guys because I have been working like really working on some happy mail but I wanted to share with you something I have been doing um, I've been playing with my um, what is it called the gold press and foil machine and I don't know if any of you own it but uh, I do have it and I love the way foiling looks on um, on uh, paper on anything I, I love 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 to the way it looks so I bought it a long time ago and and because it was put away I didn't really use it but since I've taken it out, you know, when I rearranged my craft room, I've been using it more often. So I want to share with you something that I created uh, using one of my new, um, one of my newer butterfly, where's the other one? There's the other one. One of my newer butterfly um, foil plates that have the matching dies. And that is, um, I have it right here. I have tons of stuff I'm working on right here because uh, I'll share with you my project and my other project uh, from um, Spellbinders. And I picked this up on Amazon. I'm not sure if they have it in, in the stores, but I picked up mine on Amazon and I will link it. And if you own a press and foil, any type of foiling machine, whether it be the Gemini or the gold, or the gold press and foil, you're going to love the way... Uh, these butterflies came out so I want to share with you the actual dies um, they come with uh, they come with the silhouette die and then they also come with the foil plate which has the the intricate uh, uh, designs the patterns on it so I want to share with you what I did here like here's one that I created um, and you're not going to believe what this is. I, I think I have a piece right here. Might have a piece right here. Whenever I uh, foil something, I don't throw away the piece that's left. Because this, I can actually adhere it or, or have it adhere to a piece of cardstock or designer paper. And I'm going to tell you how I did that and maybe show you I don't have my machine turned on yet and I'm actually I'm going to turn it on that way um you guys can see you guys can see I have it right behind me so kind of hopefully I set up right um so for example this is one that I did on um foiling on I'm not sure if I did it on paper or what because you can do the foiling on vellum you can do it on cardstock you can do it on acetate and that's pretty much what i did here the only thing i didn't do it on is vellum because i have vellum i just have to look for it so when i had my piece left over like this i added it i put it right above a black cardstock and in order to get that to adhere i actually need to get out my um my metal shim most of us have a metal shim and I'm using the one that goes to my impress mini so it's this metal shim and uh, what you do with that is you put it in your foiling machine so this will be the first thing touching the mat that's in your foiling machine and on top of this I'm going to lay the hot foil pretty side down and then my cardstock on top. And I'm going to do that with this so you guys can see what it looks like. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in, in the machine like this. So it's going to be the metal shim, the foil with the pretty side facing down towards the metal. I'm sorry for the glare. And then my cardstock on top. But I'm going to add a couple of sheets of paper, cardstock, or a poster board, whatever you have. Because I, when I run it through my machine, I want to make sure it's got enough pressure that the image is going to be adhered to this little piece of cardstock. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I have my machine going. And 
I'm just going to leave it there and let it heat up. And when it heats up, I'm going to pull it out so you guys can see it. So anyway, that's what I did with, um, with one of them. Another one is I use the, I, these don't come with a stamp, but I wanted the outline of the butterfly on the cardstock. So all I did was put a piece of foil on top of black cardstock and then my butterfly, actually it's the butterfly, then the foil pretty side down and then my cardstock, my piece of cardstock on top. So when I pulled off the foil, that's what I get on the cardstock. So there's, there's so many things you can do with it. Here is another way that I use it. This is a piece of acetate. And this was the negative that was left over after I had already cut it. And I adhered it to a piece of acetate. Same technique I'm doing right now, but instead of the last layer on top being cardstock, it was a piece of clear acetate. And this is the thinner acetate because uh, you want your machine to be able to cut it. And this is the results that I got. Now, I didn't throw this away because I can get a word die and I can cut out a word from maybe down here, maybe right here, a small one, but I think I can get something else out of that. So that's what I'm going to try and do. So I'm going to share with you. Here is one doing the technique that I'm doing right now, um, adding the, the, the this piece, adding that to a piece of paper or cardstock or foil or whatever you want to put it on this is what you get right there so then the where it uh took where it left all the lines whatever that wasn't used that's what was adhered there but i had the outline of the butterfly so that's what i have here and then there it is i foiled it on the designer paper as well and then here is i'm gonna slide something in there Maybe this. And then there is the acetate piece. Look at how beautiful it. Look at how beautiful it foiled on the piece of acetate. And then I added the little tiny uh, diamond dots to the center. Um, but my, my accent color is black. So there's one. Here's another one. Here is foiling the butterfly directly onto the cardstock and then cutting it out. And this is heavyweight cardstock. Again, I did the same thing there. And then here it is again in just the, um, there's just the foil. See how pretty that is? I love the way these came out. Let me move my foil out of the way. Now, uh, what I did notice though, is that with my foiling machine, uh, it doesn't like other foils or because I tried uh, the Heidi Swap ones and it didn't work with that. It just worked with the Glimmer foil. Here's another one that I did pretty much the same thing. I foiled on the black with just this and the foil and then I cut it out afterwards. So the first thing you want to do is put a, a little uh, rectangle piece of cardstock or acetate or whatever on top. And then you cut them out afterwards. But make sure you space these out en enough because when you go to put your dies on top of them to cut them out, if you do them too closely, you're going to cut off a piece of your other butterfly. So make sure there's an, a, you know, a little gap. It doesn't have to be huge, but a little gap. This one I didn't uh, do anything ex except add stickles to it and cut it out of the designer paper. And I did try to emboss it with the uh, metal piece. And you can, but I think I, I did it too tight maybe I needed to open up another layer of my platform uh, but uh, but it still it didn't rip the paper but almost so there it there it is again and I think these came out so so pretty I think my machine is ready to go guys so I'm gonna I'm gonna run that so you can see how I did that then here is one that I didn't complete I'm just gonna probably put it away I don't know not sure yet but I'm gonna take out my machine has a green light that goes on when it's ready. And all I have to do is take out the platform and take everything out of my, my big shot and just run this through it. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna take everything out of my machine so I can run this. And I kind of feel like I need 
uh, to apply more pressure. So I'm going to grab another piece of poster board or a couple pieces so I can add a shim to it. That's what I'm going to do because you can tell if it's going by too smoothly, then that means you need more. So that's what I'm going to do, just a, some paper. And I'm going to put it back in there. Because if you don't have enough pressure, it's not going to... Let me heat it up a little bit more. If you don't have enough pressure, it's not going to... Um, stick all the way to your paper so I put it back in there again and we'll give it a minute to heat up a little bit more but anyway this is and look at how beautiful these are just using that one this one little uh butterfly set and I didn't do the little flowers it does come with little flowers but I didn't use those yet but we'll see let's try it now because I want you to see what it looks like so there really isn't any waste because the, the portion that you don't, or you feel like that's something you should no, would normally throw away, you don't throw it away. You just add it to another piece of paper, run it through your Big Shot really, really slow. And I usually go back and forth because I want to make sure it is adhered well. Hopefully my phone won't cut off, guys, you know. I told you guys that my phone is funny and sometimes it does that. Okay, let's see what we have. See how it adhered to the cardstock? So when I pull this off, it does have a carrier plastic up here that you need to take off. Let me see if I can grab it. Here it is. Look at that, guys. Look at how beautiful that looks. So now I can run this through my machine. Uh, I can add the dies, run it through my machine, and just cut them out. These are actually kind of close, and that's a good example of how I said uh, to leave enough room because... These were the ones where, you know, it takes you a minute to figure it out. But see how the die overlaps almost on the other butterfly that's on top. So if you don't give yourself enough room, that's what's going to happen. But I still cut them out and I didn't waste anything. So that's one of the things that I was working on. And you can do this exact same thing. You can add the little foil that you pull off the first time you use it. What the, All the negative. You can take that off. Add it to a piece of vellum, acetate, cardstock, any of those materials, and use it. But you have to add the metal shim. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show that to you. It's better if I show it to you. Let me show that to you, how I, laid that, how I layered that in there. I'm going to open the platform. There's my metal shim. So the first thing I put in there was my metal shim. Then I added my foil, foil side down, the pretty side down. And then I added my piece of cardstock on top of that. And then I always have like a folded couple of sheets of just regular computer paper. And I lay that on top of the whole thing and close the platform. So that's how you do that. This is a little warm, but it's not so hot that I can't, uh, you know, I can touch it. It's, it's just a little warm. But that is what I wanted to share with you on how to, you know, make the most of your, of your foil where you don't waste any of it. So I hardly even, like I said, have any waste because I'm going to try and get some words cut out out of here. But I did notice that when I ran it through my Impress Mini, it really, the acetate didn't cut. But when I ran it through my Big Shot, it cut. So if it doesn't work on, if you have more, most of the crafters have more than one machine. So if it doesn't work on one machine, Transfer it to another one and try it there because it might work for you there. Chances are that it will work for you there. So I still need to package these up. I love, love, love the love the way they turned out. So there is no waste there. And then I was watching Miss um, Carol Herlock. 
I love watching her. When she creates, guys, she doesn't just create uh, one thing. Like, she's got her table full of projects. I don't create like that. Um, I'm not that fast or that patient. When I create something, I want to share it. Anyway, I'm going to link her video. She followed a tutorial by Christiane's Crafty Adventures, and she created a sewing machine, and, and she created five sewing machines. Sorry. I only created one. She created five. And they're beautiful. I love the way they came out. And this is my take on that. I did follow Christiane's tutorial. The only difference is that after I made my template, I scanned it in my brother's scan and cut and made the, the shape of the sewing machine. So I don't have to do that anymore. All I got to do is, you know, put a sheet of paper in my brother's scan and cut and I'm done. So anyway, uh, this is what I created. Look at my sewing machine. I can't move too far back. Let me see if I can lift this up a little bit. I'm not sure what you guys are going to be seeing because if I lift it up too much, I can't see into the phone and see what's going on. But here's my box. Look at how pretty that is. It, and it looks big on the screen, guys, but it's not very big at all. I think it measures about, I'll tell you right now, it's about nine and a quarter inches uh, by, I'm going to say about nine, nine and a quarter by nine. And uh, look at how pretty it looks. I use my Anna Griffin uh, embossing folders that emboss and cut here to do the thimble, the sewing machine, and the measuring uh, strip right here. Right here, I have just a collage of flowers. And the beauty of that is that I have all different types of flowers, but they work well together. I had a piece of tool on my desk. I hate to waste. I just tied it into a bowl and tucked it in there. That's all I did. Here is a metal piece that I kind of painted uh, rose gold. And I didn't have anything, a knob. I was looking for a wooden knob to put here for the tension in the thread, but I didn't find anything. But what I, I remembered that I had some pink uh, buttons that I had hauled from Hobby Lobby. These are beautiful. They're so pretty. Um, and they're like a, like a very pale pink. So, and they have clear ones and solid ones. So I just kind of stacked them up and made that part where you wrap the thread uh, through for the tension on the thread. Now, what I did with mine, I actually added the loop here where the thread goes through. And then I added a loop. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there is a loop in there. That's the way the sewing machines have it. And I created that with a wire and my needle. So mine is actually threaded like a sewing machine would be. Uh, there is, let me put my finger there. See how it's threaded? But that's what I did with mine. And uh, for the back, here's the, the wheel part. Um, and this, you loosen it or tighten it to put in the needles. Uh, this was in older machines, not the new ones anymore. But again, I just used a spool of ribbon, a couple of die cuts, and then here's another one of those buttons. And I added a flat back pearl to that. Uh, up here, look at this beautiful knob that I have here. That knob is a vintage knob that reminded me of a, a bobbin, a sewing machine bobbin, where you wrap it and put it inside your machine. But it also reminds me of a spool of thread. And all I did was add a little of the rose gold paint on there. But this actually opens up. This would be great uh, to give to someone that sews. So here's a box right here. And this is, you know, it's pretty deep. It's not a short little box. It goes down probably around, I'm going to say five inches, four and a half to five inches. I'm going to say about five inches. So it's pretty deep. So there's one. And this was is a knob that was on some furniture. Uh, my husband used to be a garbage man. And I would always tell him. If you see furniture that somebody throws out, especially antiques, see if you can take the knobs and stuff off and hinges. And he would do it for me. So one day he came home with these. And I have, this is the first time I ever use it. I've been hoarding them. So there's one. Here on the side are two more drawers. So I turned it on the side so you can see. But it's really the front of the machine. So here's another one. Now what I did with mine... 
I did it a little differently. I followed the tutorial exactly, except that I added an extra piece of chipboard to the front of the box that was a little bit bigger. That way it wouldn't go all the way in and it would be look closed all the way around. So that's all I did. I made it just a little bit wider, a little bit taller. And uh, when you close it, there's no gap. So I like that. I did the same thing to the bottom. This is a little Tim Holtz knob. And this one comes out. And this one is pretty long, guys. Look at how long that is. So this one right here is pretty, pretty long. You can put so much in these sewing machines. On the back, I didn't do much. But it's pretty. I made sure to finish it with a designer paper and then down here at the bottom I line my box with chipboard so even this piece and this piece are lined with chipboard so mine's pretty um, it's pretty sturdy so I lined it up let me take these out and uh, because I lined it up it made it really snug when it closes so I don't really need a magnet or anything there mine stays closed but here is a piece a remnant of the uh, felt that I bought from Hobby Lobby that I used on my purse swap because it was the same print that's on the sewing machine I just glued it on a piece of uh, cardstock and I glued both of those pieces to a piece of chipboard to make the box sturdy and I have been working on some uh, embellishments to go in here. So here are some rosettes that I created um, in a rose gold. And I did a couple of the medium ones. And I did some little teeny. The piece that I cut off, the bigger ones, I stitched them. And the piece that comes off of here, I stitch and make those into rosettes. So that's another thing that I've been working on. And I want to share that, um, that crepe paper with you because it is so pretty look at the sheen on this rose gold paper crepe paper it's very 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 pretty so this is what I'm making the rosettes out of uh, so like I said I've been making embellishments another thing that I created and I'm going to share all the embellishments when I'm done with them I created a um I had bought this Sarah Davies a little embroidery hoop and it came with a set of three like bigger one a, a big one a medium and a small so this is the medium one right here I adhered it to a bigger rosette it does have a piece of pink and gold tool underneath but it works well even though the paper is rose gold the the gold color works very well here so that's what I've been working on guys I created that one and then I created this one look at how pretty that these are those roses that my friend Jackie just gifted me. Uh, and I think she said these were from the Dollar Tree. I have some right here handy. Let me share them with you. I think they are so pretty. And I love that they look almost like tin. But they have a rose gold color on them. So they work very well with this rose gold rosette. And look at how pretty that looks. Anyway, guys, that's all I wanted to share with you today. When I get done with everything, I will share all the embellishments that I created. Uh, but that's what I've been doing so far. Thanks for watching. I hope everyone is having a great day. And I hope that you take out those machines that we paid good money for and use them. And hopefully not waste, you know, get as much out of your paper as possible. Thanks for watching. Bye.